This is a pussy willow. All willows actually have the same kinds of compounds in different proportions, different amounts, and also different strengths depending on the conditions in which the tree is grown. But I wanted to show you this pussy willow because it's amazing how many things are going on at once. This is one of those weird trees that puts out the flowers before it puts out the leaves. And you see these tiny little brown buds here. They're starting to creep out like little hedgehogs coming out of their caves. And there's still a cap on this one that's growing. Oh, I knocked it off. There's one that doesn't have a cap. And then look what happens when these little pussy willow catkins start to flower. That is just the most exquisite thing. And the flower, as well as the bark, but the bark especially, is really rich in another natural plant sugar called salicin, or rather, salicin is mixed with the plant sugar, and that makes a glycoside. And that is the compound that we know to be anti-rheumatic, anti-fever. But if you were to take most of this tree and somehow get it into one pill, it wouldn't do that much for a headache, and I'll tell you why. The compound that we know as aspirin has been changed chemically so that it targets the kind of headache pain or even the fever that people are associating with aspirin so I don't know, the last 120 years. But let me tell you a story instead of talking about chemistry with the salix, with the willow bark. When I was in Canada, cold, wet climate, my hosts had an old arthritic dog out in the backyard, and no matter what they did to that dog, he wouldn't stop eating the bark off this one tree that they loved, and they couldn't get him to stop doing it. So I went outside, and sure enough, the dog was chewing on the willow bark because he was getting the anti-inflammatory effect that is so good for rheumatic aches and pains. So what we know about white willow bark is that the the stringency and the compounds that we have in this tree together, they can work as an antibacterial. Many people use it that way, but it's really a great anti-inflammatory for joints, hips, and knees, and elbows, and neck. And if you have a fever, it will also help bring down that fever. But the most important point about differentiating between how aspirin works for fever and how this willow bark works for fever is that the willow bark has other compounds besides the so-called active ones that help us to deal with the active medicinal properties of the tree so that it heals up torn, inflamed GI linings, which often go along with poor digestion and rheumatic -y aches and pains and arthritis. So this not only doesn't cause the side effects that aspirin causes, it actually heals them up. So Charlotte, I want you to show me how you get the willow bark off. The part that you want is not the outside of the bark, the hard woody part. You want the living green section on the inside. So if we were to take a large section of bark off the trunk of the tree, we would be peeling off this inner portion of the bark. What I do is just to get a bunch of twigs that, that are mostly green bark. And then I can just make a tea out of these twigs because they'll have what I'm looking for, which is rather nice because then I don't have to damage the trunk of the tree. I can just come and do the pruning and then go home and make myself some willow bark tea. Beautiful. And it's okay if you have some of the leaves left in there, even if you have some of the flowers left in there. Yeah. So there's so many different species of willow, not just the pussy willow that we've got here, white willow, black willow, all kinds of willows, but willows love water. And when I think about what that means energetically, when willow is working in the body, it helps with the conditions that happen in cold, wet, damp climates like painful joints and arthritis. So it's a plant that we often find around water, but it helps when our water is out of balance in our own bodies. And for ecological reasons, we would never take a ring around the bark because that would actually kill the tree from that point out. We always want to take it in little strips or even much better as you're showing us. We want plants that are being trimmed and that mostly green bark being used for tea. That can be dried and stored and then made into tea or it can be used fresh for tea too.